Hey guys, so today we're going to take a look at how to add users to your TrueNAS system. So today's method, we're going to use the GUI, which is really only usable for adding uh, users one by one if you've got a very small number of users and adding groups one by one if you've got a very small number of groups that you wanted to add. In a future video, we'll take a look at how you might be able to add some of these users in bulk via the API. But for today, we're just going to add one or two users. So let's get straight into it. The very first thing that we need to do is make sure that we're logged into our TrueNAS GUI. And then on the left hand side, we're going to click the accounts tab and then we're going to hit the users tab. We're going to create a group as well a little bit later on, but we're going to start by creating the, the user. So clicking on the users, we can see all of the users that are already in the TrueNAS system. A lot of these are built in users, so they're, they're ones that are automatically created. If you hit the gear icon on the top right hand side, you can hide and uh, show these users if you really need to, but we're okay with uh, listing them here. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that, so I'm not going to make the, change that setting at all. So what we're going to want to do is hit uh, add on the top right hand side, and then we get brought to a new interface where we're being asked for details about the user. So I'm just going to start off by populating the user's first name, and I'm just going to call him Bobby McBobberson. And uh, then TrueNAS is going to be asking us for a, uh, a username for the user. Now, when I click on this tab, it's going to auto-populate with a suggested username, and that's okay. We can use that and give that to the user if we want, but we can also turn around and change that to... Um, something a little bit more friendly for the user that we're able to, to share to if we don't like the auto-populated option. It's also going to ask us for an email address for the user. That's not a required field, so you don't necessarily need to populate that if you don't have an email address for the user, uh, but it might be convenient if, uh, if you do um, to populate that so that you can control a few other options in the future, like uh, resetting passwords and so on. So then we're getting, being prompted with the uh, password field. So we're going to have to enter a password uh, of some sort here for the user. Chrome is going to suggest some passwords, but I'm going to ignore that and just type in my own password that I've got here. And then I'm going to need to confirm that password again. So again, this is going to be a temporary password for the user. So uh, you should always use pretty strong passwords uh, as the user is not likely to immediately change it to anything good. Um, but I'm just using a temporary one for this demonstration, so I'm not too worried about what it is. I'm going to be getting rid of the user uh, pretty much immediately after I uh, demonstrate this. So then we get asked for the user ID that we need for the user. Uh, this is quite an important field. So all of the built-in user accounts use user IDs from zero, which is root to 999. Um, any one of those IDs in between is actually an automatically built-in user. And then the regular real user accounts uh, use values from 1000 uh, up. So my other account has already got the user ID 1000, and therefore TrueNAS is automatically asking me if I want to use the user ID 1001. I'm okay with that in this instance for Bobby, but uh, in some of my other videos, you'll see that when we create users for Plex, Radar, Sonar, and uh, some of the other options like transmission and so on, it's going to be very important that we get the right ID for uh, the user account, otherwise a few other things won't work. So you do need to kind of pay attention and understand what this uh, field is for, but 1001 is perfect for us in this example. And then it's going to ask me if I want to create a new primary group for the users. Uh, if I uncheck this box, it'll give me the option to select an existing group that I will uh, want to add the user to. So in, in this case, uh, I'm okay with it creating a new primary group for the user, uh, and we'll take a look at that group creation in a few minutes. Uh, what it's going to do here is it's going to create a group, a new primary group, and it's going to call it Bobby uh, as well. So the group will, the user will be in a group uh, with the same username as the, the user, and that's useful for a couple of things in the future, but we're not going to worry too much about that now. And then we've got the option to give the user a home directory. Uh, if the uh, user was a real user and I had a home directory to give them, then I'd be able to select it here and that user would be able to use it as a, as a home directory, which would allow us to set a couple of different permissions for the, the, the home directory, uh, such as whether or not the user could read it, write and execute permissions on that group or on that uh, home directory. Again, I don't have a home directory to give them, so we're not going to worry too much about those permissions now. Then on the right-hand side over here, we've got the option, several different authentication options. So uh, these are quite important depending on how you've got your system set up and how, uh, how much of a, a hardening stance you're taking against uh, attacks. But there's a couple of options here that are particularly interesting. If I was to set the SSH public key for the user here, that would allow them to use a certificate-based authentication for SSH. Uh, which would be very, very uh, much more secure than using a password authentication. It's much less likely that those credentials would be able to be compromised uh, through any sort of scanning or cracking techniques if the user account was exposed uh, to those kind of attacks in some some way. I don't have an SSH public key for the uh, the user, but this is where I would put it if I did have one. 
Then we've got the option to disable the password for the, the user. So uh, that's set to no because I'd like to, to allow the user to use their password to log into the, the system, to log into the share, or to log into whatever portion of uh, TrueNAS I'm giving them access to. So I'm not going to disable that at the moment. If I did select to disable that, it would remove a couple of options that we'll talk down here because the password would be disabled. They wouldn't be able to do a few things. Um, but as I said, I, I want them to be able to use the password, so I'm, I'm leaving that as a default no. Then you've got the option here for what kind of shell the user is presented with whenever they they are using the shell with uh, TrueNAS. There's a lot of different options here. To me, it doesn't really make any difference. Um, and the users, uh, so we can just leave it as the default for the, the user. Then we've got four options that are uh, listed down here. I'm going to leave these at their default values, but we'll just run through them really quick. The option to lock the user is if you wanted to disable the user completely so that no one would be able to log in uh, to the account at all, no matter what method that they were using. That's really useful if you think that the account has been compromised or if it's just for someone who's left your organization or shouldn't have access to your system anymore, but they, they did in the past. It's also kind of useful if you just want to uh, lock the user out for a temporary uh, period without actually deleting them. So maybe they're gone away for a week or you're concerned about their use of the account and you want them to do something or uh, reset a password or something like that before they, they uh, are allowed back into the system. Then you've got the option here to permit sudo. Permitting sudo would allow them to run commands as though they were the super administrator. Uh, we don't want to allow that for this particular user because I don't want to be, them to be able to grab those credentials and uh, run commands as a super administrator. But if you did have a user that you wanted to allow that for, uh, that would be the option that you would be uh, prompting with here. Uh, and then we've got the option to uh, specify that they have a Microsoft account. This gives you a couple more options in terms of authenticating if the user is running Windows 2008 and greater, I believe. I'm not too concerned about allowing those options now at the moment, so I, I don't need to uh, specify that option. I'm going to leave that unchecked. And then the final option that is checked by default is Samba authentication, and that allows the user to access the Samba shares that I might be setting up for the users uh, in the future, which some people might disagree, but is essentially the primary use for the TrueNAS system. It, it is a file share system, so defaulting to allow the Samba authentication is uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm okay with allowing them to access the file share, so I am going to leave that checked. And then um, we've got the option here, we're just going to hit uh, submit, and it's going to create the user for us. Just going to think about it for a couple of minutes. And then Chrome's going to ask me if I want to save the password. I do not. And then we're going to take a, a scroll down here and we can see that Bobby has been created and he is not a built-in user. He's got the 1001 ID that I have uh, specified before. And his full name is, of course, Bobby McBobberson. And if we just expand this option here, we can see a couple of other options uh, for him, including the shell, the email address that I've set, whether or not we've disabled the password and so on and so forth. So we also have the option to edit his settings in here. Maybe we wanted to change his password for him. Maybe we want to change some of these uh, other groups that we have uh, created for him here so we can see that he's in the primary group Bobby, which we'll look at in a second. Or uh, maybe we want to specify an SSH public key. Any of those settings that we, we just talked about, we'd be able to edit here. So I'll just hit cancel there and I will just note for you guys as well, you, you do also have the option to delete Bobby as the, the user account. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, ignore that for the moment. We're going to go ahead and create a group and then we'll come back and, and maybe delete all of the users. So if you want to hit the groups option on the top left hand side as well, you can see that you're prompted with uh, all of your options for your uh, groups. So here we can see that Bobby is a group that exists. Bobby has been placed in a group called Bobby. Uh, and that was automatically created whenever we created the group for him. Now, each individual user uh, is required to be in a primary group of some sort, and the default is to create a brand new group for them whenever you want to. But maybe you don't want to create have individual groups for each individual user. Maybe you want to create a new group that all of your users go into. So we can see on the, the top right hand side again, if we just hit the add button, we get prompted with the same UI uh, GID question um, that we were prompted with with the user and it's specified now that Bobby and his group uh, has taken up the user ID 1001 that uh, TrueNest has given me 1002 which again is for uh, user created groups so there's no problems here 1002 is perfectly acceptable for me here but you may want to change it depending on uh, what you're trying to do with the, the group again we're being prompted for the names of the group and the UI here is a lot more uh, straightforward. There's not as many options, but I do need to specify a name which will become essentially a username as well. So I'm just gonna call that new hyphen users. 
And then again, we've got the option to permit sudo for users of the group. Uh, so sometimes you don't necessarily want to specify whether or not a user can use sudo on a user by user basis. You want to do it on a group by group basis, um, or you want to create one sudo group and then put certain users uh, into it. Uh, you've also got the option for Samba authentication again. Again, maybe you don't want the individual users to have the Samba authentication, but maybe you want the group that they're in to allow that uh, permission instead. And then you've got the option here to allow duplicate uh, GIDs. So this would allow us to use the same GID that um, we were using already for a user group uh, or a uh, user. I don't need to do that. I know that 1002 is unique, so I'm, I'm totally fine with that. We can hit submit here. And here we are, we've got the option uh, new users, and we can see the option to edit, which would bring us back to the screen to maybe change some settings like uh, permitting sudo, or we've got the option to delete it, which we'll do in a moment. And then we've also got the option for members. So if I click on the members option here, you can see that I've got uh, no members uh, already, and that all of my users are listed here. So I'm able to put in a member. So let's take a quick look for Bobby and make him a member of this group. Here he is here at the bottom. And then I can just select him so that he's highlighted. And then we'll just click on the arrow option and it will appear over here in the group members. And then I just need to save that. And we're back to our uh, user groups. So now that we've added Bobby to the new users group, we can go into the users page and we can take a quick look to see uh, what groups Bobby is in now at the moment. So if I just expand his user account, we can hit the edit button. We can see that he's now a member of the new users auxiliary group uh, here as well. Or we can go ahead and we can make his primary group the new users group, uh, whatever configuration we need to do um, here. Finally, guys, we're going to take a look at how we would delete the groups themselves and then maybe delete the Bobby user if we had to. So it's it's pretty straightforward. We're going to come here to the groups interface again, and then we're just going to hit the uh, arrow button that expands the tab. And we've got the option to delete, and we can confirm that we want to delete that. Hit the delete option, and the, del the group is deleted uh, itself. So then we can do the same thing for the new users uh, group here. We can hit the delete button, but now it's also going to prompt uh, me that there are users in the group itself. So it's going to ask me if I want to delete both users in the new users um, group. I, I don't want to do that, so I'm not going to check that uh, option. I'm going to delete those uh, users manually in, in one second. Uh, so I can hit the confirm option here, and then that will delete the group itself, but it won't have deleted the user. I, I could have deleted the user that way, I chose not to. Uh, so I'm going to expand uh, Bobby over here as well, and I'm going to click on the delete button, and it's going to ask me if I want to confirm uh, deleting Bobby, the user uh, account. So I'm going to hit the confirm option there, I'm going to hit delete. And that's it. Uh, Bobby has been removed from the group itself. So guys, if I could just ask you to go ahead and do the YouTube dance again, which is to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, that allows the YouTube algorithm to know that you're really enjoying the content, and it allows me to add more videos in the future, like the one that I've mentioned about adding users in bulk. Uh, otherwise, appreciate your viewing, and I will catch you guys on the flip side.